Hey everyone, in this quick video, I want to walk through a way that we could tell people a custom URL that would point to our YouTube channel. We're used to the idea that, hey, just regular YouTube, I can tell people, for example, well, it's youtube.com slash my channel. But what about if, for example, here, I could just tell people, hey, it's onboard to azure.com. And when I entered that, it would actually go and redirect to my regular channel name. Or maybe it's not just that kind of root domain, but if I went, for example, youtube.onboard2azure.com, that would go to my website. Now this assumes we already have our own kind of domain name. Maybe we have some sort of brand already, and I want to create that YouTube dot whatever that domain is that goes to my YouTube channel. And it's actually many different ways you can achieve this. But the simple way I'm using here is just a redirection web page. So that's just a HTML file. And if we jump over for a second and look at this, all I'm really doing in this file is this refresh command. And it just says, hey, I want to redirect to my YouTube channel name. And if for some reason that failed, well, I just actually have a link to, hey, click this link. Now you could just click that file right now. So if I go over to Explorer and just double click the file, we can see it open the HTML file and then redirect to the YouTube channel. So it's super simple. So what we have to do is make that file available somewhere that I can then give to my custom domain name. So the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna create a GitHub repository. Now these are free, so this is not costing us any money. And we're gonna go to the repositories and we're just gonna say, hey, I wanna create a new repository. So if we went back over there for a second, so go back, I'm in my looking at the different repositories. And what I'm gonna do is click this new button we have right here. And when we create this repository, just give it a name. So I might call it, for example, my YouTube redirect. And that can be public or private. It doesn't actually matter. Don't add anything to it. We're just gonna create it totally empty. So we'll say create repository. Now at this point, we can actually create the file we need directly in the GitHub interface. Now it's telling us, hey, you wanna go and create some things and um, do various options with local editors. I don't need to do any of that. What I can actually do is click this create a new file option right here. And if we create this, we're gonna call it index.html. That's all we need to do. And for our content, what is the content of that file I just showed? So if I go back over to here, I can just copy and paste that whole file. And then I'm gonna paste it into here. Now, you would wanna make sure you replace the URLs with your YouTube channel. So you'd replace both of these with your channel. And then just scroll down and hit commit. That's all we have to do at this point. So now that file is in our GitHub repository. Now again, I made mine public, so what you could actually do is you could go over to this page and you could do a clone of this or you could actually do a full off of it and that would make it easy for you to create your own. But it's super simple. Um, you had the code, I've got a link in the description to this file. So now we have this file hosted somewhere, we need to offer it. Now what I'm gonna do for the offering of this file is I'm gonna use Azure. So Azure is a cloud hosting solution and what you can do is you can go and get a free subscription. So again, the link is in the URL below, but you can start free. You're just gonna kind of give it an account name to use. You even get credit, but we're gonna use some of these services that are always free to actually host this site. So you're gonna go and get that Azure subscription. Once you have it, what we're gonna do is create a static web app. So if you're in the home dashboard, you would type static web app, and then I'm gonna create a new one. We'll start from scratch. So we're gonna create a new resource group. So you'll hit create new, and I'll just call it RG 
um, YouTube. Really doesn't matter, I've got that already, so I'll call it redirect. And give it a name. So I'll call it my static web app redirect. Just give it some unique name. We wanna use the free option. So then it's not gonna cost me any money. Pick a region. This is just for Azure Functions. I'm not even gonna use these, so this really doesn't matter. So you could leave it. And it's asking us where to get the code from. So we're gonna use GitHub, and then you're gonna sign in with GitHub. Because I'm already signed in on the browser with my GitHub account. So if you didn't have a GitHub account, when you went to GitHub, you would again sign up for a free account on GitHub. And you're gonna say yes, authorize this Azure App Service Static Web Apps. Now it wants my password. So it's now authenticated. And if I scroll down, I want, hey, that's my GitHub account. Again, if you go over to the GitHub page, when you went and signed up for your account, you would have given it kind of a name. So there's mine, John the Brit. And then it's, well, which repo? So what's that one we just created? So we created YouTube redirect. And then the branch is gonna be main, that's the default. And what it's now gonna do is it's build details. Now, because we just got a regular HTML page, we'll actually do custom. The app location is the root. There is no API location or output location, so we can just leave the app location as that slash, that's the root folder, because we put our index.html file in the root of that repository. So I'm gonna click review and create. So that's that gonna go off and create this static web app. And it will also actually go to the GitHub. So it's gonna go to the GitHub that we authorize and it's gonna create something so that any time we actually change something in our repository, it will automatically push it to this static web app that it just created. Notice it has a URL. So if we copy this and go to it right now, it doesn't have anything yet because we just created it. But what it actually did in our GitHub, if we go back to that repo that we just created, it's now created a workflow. So if we go into this workflow, this is now gonna run every single time. You don't really need to know anything about this, but it's gonna run every time we do a commit into this repository. So it's gonna take maybe a, a minute to run. If we actually go and look at it, we can see, hey, it's running right now. We can see this is in action. So this is pushing the code that's already there actually into our Azure Static Web App. And once that's finished, so we can actually go and see exactly what it's doing, the build and deploy job, so it's running that right now. Once that's complete, it will update this with the code from our repo. And you see it's done it already. So now, when I go to this app, it actually goes to my YouTube channel. So when I can go to this, and hey, it's my YouTube channel. So we're, we've got a page now hosted that will take us to our channel. But I don't want to use this weird name that it has. I don't want to give that to people. I want to add our own custom name. Now this means you have your own DNS domain. Now that might be hosted on GoDaddy or Network Solutions. Mine is actually hosted on Azure itself. So for me, I would actually go to my DNS zone and I would go to whatever name that I wanna add this new record for. So for example, I wanna create a new record set and I might call it YT for YouTube. Now a key thing that I need to know before I create this record is to remember that value that we actually had up on this static web app redirect, you need this URL. So I wanna copy this to my clipboard. And now when I go to that DNS, I'm gonna create a CNAME record. So it's just a record that points to something else. So I'm gonna do add record set. And my name might be YT. The type would be CNAME. Now the interface is gonna differ depending on what system you are using to host your personal domain. But the alias, take out the HTTPS part, is gonna be that value. So you're basically creating a record in your DNS that points to that name 
of that static web app we created. Now, because I'm actually hosting this in Azure as well, the actual resource, I can use something called an alias record set. And all that actually lets me do is I can actually point it directly to the resource itself and not have to type in that value. But you're probably not hosting your DNS in Azure, so you would need to do that C name and point it to that value that you copied. Either way, it's gonna generate the same C name record and I can now go and see Yep, there's my record right there. So now we've done that, we need to make the static web app know about that name. So what we can do is we can go into custom domains. I'm gonna add, and I'm just gonna type in that yt.onboardtoazure.com. Next, and it's gonna validate, hey, do I actually legitimately own that? So it's gonna go and check that YT value to make sure it points to that gentle tree, in this case, value that it has. So I'll click add. And it has to go and validate that. So it's gonna go and check. And it can take time. It may not show up straight away. And you can come back and check and wait till it's completed. Now, once it's completed though, what will now happen, it will also generate a certificate for us, a HTTPS. So now you can actually tell people, hey, go to HTTPS colon, in my case, yt.onboardtoazure.com, and it will actually redirect now to my YouTube channel, and you are done. That's literally all there is to it. Again, this takes a little bit of time. If I tried this right now, it doesn't work yet. The cert is invalid because it hasn't generated it yet. If we try to just do HTTP, it works at this point. So it, now the redirect works, I just can't do HTTPS yet because it's still going through that complete validation process. But once that is complete, then I'll be able to give people that HTTPS value. And you can see I've got that on some of my others, which is why I can absolutely go, hey, HTTPS youtube.onboardtoazure.com. That's hosted on a different static web app I already created. Now you notice before, I could also do HTTPS, just that route on board to azure.com. It works exactly the same way. The only difference is that validation you have to do, you create a text record and it will tell you what to create. It tells you the value you have to put in. And it's just about proving, hey, I really do own that domain. But that's it, that's really all that is required to go and get a custom URL. Obviously you have to own that domain. So that domain may cost you some money to purchase and then the DNS may be part of that service or maybe in my case I pay basically a dollar a month to host that domain actually in Azure. It's like 50 cents for the hosting and then 40 cents for a couple of million records. So we see that now says ready. So now I could close that it's now, I can see that domain there. So now we can actually go and say, okay, well, let's try that HTTPS YT and it works. So there you go. Now I could tell people, hey, yeah, go to yt.onboardtoazure.com and it will go to my channel. So that was it. Um, I hope that was useful. It's one way you can kind of have that custom domain now to just go straight to your channel and it gets you playing with Azure and those static web apps and you can kind of see that complete flow. Again, my page was just a redirect, but I could host anything. I could host complete sites on this as well. For example, I also host a sort of learn.onboardtoazure.com that is using exactly the same type of idea. It's just I have different content in that folder that people can go and leverage. So that was it. Um, I hope it's useful again and uh, good luck.